What's up y'all and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about weather and ducks. So stick around because we're getting started right now. y'all and welcome back to the channel and like I said today we're going to be talking about weather and ducks. Now before we get into today's video let me say this first. All of the information that I'm going to share in this video is all coming from Ducks Unlimited and Delta Waterfowl. I am not a wildlife biologist nor am I a scientist. I don't know that much about migration and weather and how it affects waterfowl but those guys do so I looked it up going to share this information with you. If you already know and understand this information, that's great. But there's a lot of people that don't understand how weather really affects ducks and their migration. If this is your first time watching me, consider hitting the subscribe button and tapping the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. It really helps me a lot when you do that. So let's dive into today's video. The fall movements of ducks and geese occur from September through January, and most of us, no matter where and when we choose to hunt, are likely to witness an abundance of birds at least a few times each season. Decreasing day length is the primary environmental cue that causes waterfowl to begin heading south from their breeding grounds in the fall. Shorter days indicate that worsening weather is not far behind, bringing winter conditions that freeze wetlands and cover farm fields with deep snow. However, while day length ultimately stimulates migratory behavior, waterfowl movements also are influenced by weather and food availability. Waterfowl, as well as other birds, use a variety of navigational cues during migration. These include the position of the sun and stars, the earth's magnetic field, and topographical features such as rivers, mountains, lakes, and coastlines. Collectively, these cues enable waterfowl to migrate even on the darkest of nights. Differences in migration timing and distance among waterfowl species are related to the bird's feeding ecology. For example, blue-winged teal, which feed on seeds and invertebrates in shallow wetlands, reliably depart the breeding grounds in August and September because their preferred feeding areas are the first to freeze in the fall. Gabwalls, which feed almost exclusively on aquatic plants in slightly larger and deeper wetlands usually depart breeding areas in October and typically do not wait for winter to arrive before heading south. Like blue wings, they must fuel up, store fat, and depart the breeding grounds before their preferred foods are trapped under ice. Most diving ducks and mallards may remain up north well into November until old man winter finally gives them a hard nudge. Canvasbacks, redheads, scalp, and ringnecks typically feed on aquatic plants and invertebrates in larger, deeper marshes that are the last to freeze, allowing them to linger and store fat until bitter cold temperatures force them to migrate to their wintering grounds. Mallards sometimes don't arrive on wintering areas until late December, and then they are in reduced numbers. Mallards, pintails, green-winged teal, and widgeon often consume waste grain in both dry and flooded fields, in addition to feeding on seeds and aquatic plants in wetlands. For these birds, especially mallards, cold weather often isn't enough to send them on their way to their wintering grounds. Significant snowfall must also cover their food supplies in harvested grain fields and wetlands. Mallards, in good condition, with fat making up 25% of their body mass, can withstand up to seven days without food, allowing them to wait out short periods of harsh weather. If a winter thaw occurs, they will often reverse migrate back north. 
This strategy enables the birds to minimize the risks associated with migration and allows them to return to their breeding grounds as soon as possible in the spring. Most waterfowl hunters understand the effect of weather on waterfowl migration. With the exception for the few species that are hardwired for more dependable long distance migrations such as the blue winged teal, waterfowl are adapted to only migrate as far as necessary to find food, open water, and places to rest. Without freezing temperatures and snow to cover food sources, waterfowl will linger. It is only beneficial for them to reduce risk of mortality from migration and remain closer to spring breeding areas, especially among mallards and pintails. Birds that arrive earliest on breeding areas have access to the best territories, which results in a higher probability of nesting and successfully rearing a brood in the spring. For some species, it may take several consecutive days of freezing temperatures and snow cover to push them southward. Droughts or floods during the growing season can reduce summer plant growth and thereby impact fall and winter food abundance. Fall and winter droughts and floods can also impact food availability. A lack of water or water that is too deep can limit access to food resources, while widespread shallow flooding can create extensive new feeding habitats, causing waterfowl to disperse widely across the landscape. All right, so here's what we've learned so far in this brief little bit of information I shared on weather and waterfowl migration. Now, you heard you heard me say in there, I'm, I'm reading all this stuff from Ducks Unlimited to Delta Waterfowl. You heard me say that depending on the snow and the ice and amount of fat that a duck has accumulated, he will ride out the storm. He will ride out the snow. He'll ride out the ice for a few days before he has to leave. So that's a big one. You know, how many times have you been in the woods? I know I have. How many times have you been in the woods, in the field, in a marsh, in the timber, whatever and you know there's a front coming you know and you hunt two or three days before the front and you also hunt up to the front and through it and it's like the ducks just don't come you know and then you every day you're kicking yourself in the butt and you're like man you know what happened man i just knew this front was going to push some birds down here i just knew they were coming man this front should have done it but now you know depending on the severity of the front it may not have been strong enough to push them down. Yeah, you're going to have a few that are going to go regardless. Just like the information said about the blue winged teal, the gab wall, their migration is primarily geared around the shortening of the days, more so than the winter. So they're going to go regardless. Those ducks are just hardwired to get up and leave. That's what they do. But now your old wily mallards, your pintails, and those birds, not so much. It's going to take a lot to get them to move. And then when they do move, they're only going to go as far as they have to. You know, they don't want to go any further than they have to away from the breeding grounds because they want to be the first ones to get back. So I understand it, you know, and I hope you do too because I, I know we've all been there and we've been wondering where the birds are. How come this front didn't push them down? It just doesn't make any sense. So after reading this and, and sharing this information and learning this, you gotta keep that in mind this upcoming season when you're checking your weather apps and you're watching the weather channel and you're planning your hunts around the weather and the fronts and things like that that yeah you got a good front coming and it should push some birds down here and it, and it probably will yeah, it may not be as many as you as you hope but you just don't know because it all depends on the duck and his attitude and he, or his personality you know what we've learned from this is ducks are just like you and I I may be a strong-willed person, or I may not be, or you may be a strong-willed person, you know? So what we've learned is these mallards, is what it says here, the mallards are gonna be the last ones to leave. They're, they just can't stand it. They're gonna ride it out as long as they can, depending on the snow and the ice and the weather. They're gonna ride it out as long as they can where they are, and they're not leaving until they absolutely have to. And they're only gonna leave when they have to find food and they have to have water. So. And this research also shows us that the duck can go up to seven days without food, but he has to have water. That's the big one. So depending on how cold the front is and the amount of ice is coming, if it's going to lock up all the water, well, yeah, he's going to move then. He's got to. He's got to have water. He can get by without food, but he's got to have water. So 
it's just something to think about this upcoming season. Like I said, when you're watching your weather apps, you're watching your weather channel, you know, you see a good front coming, you should get a good push of birds. You're hoping to get a good push of birds, but if you don't see the amount of, of birds that you think you should, well, now you understand why. Some of them are going to leave, some of them are not. Like it goes back to what I was saying about strong wheel. Some of those birds are strong, they're strong wheel. Some of them say, uh-uh, it's getting cold, I'm out of here. I ain't going to be the one up here scrapping for something to eat. And the rest of them is like us old southern folks down here when a hurricane's coming. We ain't evacuating. We just ain't doing it. We're going to ride it out until about the day before. And we say, all right, yeah, this sucker's fit to bust us wide open. from the blow the house down. It's time to go. That's the way they are. That Every duck is different. They all have their own personalities. Some of them migrate depending on the shortness of the day and the lunar cycle. And others say, no, nope, I ain't going nowhere till I have to. So I hope this really helps you out. Maybe gives you a brief little better understanding of what affects um, the waterfowl migration as far as the weather, the lunar cycle, things like that that really gets them going instead of just thinking, oh, the temperature's dropping, uh, the ducks are coming. That's, that's not true. Some are going to leave, but the majority of them are just going to ride it out. So I hope this gives you a better understanding. If you really want to go into a little bit deeper detail on the waterfowl migration, go on the Ducks Unlimited website, check it out. It's on there. If you can't find it on the website, just, just type in your search bar, do a Google search for weather and waterfowl migration, or type in, you know, what affects waterfowl migration. You can find it there. It's all available on the Ducks Unlimited and also on Delta Waterfowl website. Go check that stuff out if you want to know a lot more about it. I could have made this video really, really long, but it would have been really, really boring. So I try to just hit the high points so you kind of get the, the gist of what's actually causing the ducks to migrate and what's taking place. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like today's video, smash that thumbs up button for me. It really helps me out a lot when you do that. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell so you get notified anytime I drop some new content. And that's all I've got for you this week, guys. So until next time, y'all bust them up.